We all suffer from idolatry. Let's get frank about it. Hey Carmelos, I invite you now to make sure that you leave a comment down below maybe letting me know what's going on in relationship to the little gods in your life. Those, those little things that, you know, we tend to worship without even thinking about it. And what are some ways maybe we can overcome them? Maybe we can get a good conversation going. So this video is going to go up on the third Sunday of Lent, and uh, I've really been wrestling with those readings as I prepare for my homily and etc. Because we have the reading from Exodus, uh, where God imparts the uh, Ten Commandments onto the Israelites. And we also have the reading from John about uh, Jesus cleansing the temple. And as I was sitting um, in adoration, wrestling with these, these readings before Lord's presence uh, in the Eucharist, this word idolatry just kept coming to me. You know, because the first of the commandments, you should have no other God except for me. And, you know, one of the things about Carmelite spirituality is this, is that, you know, we have to realize we have to strip everything away. As John of the Cross says, nada, nada, nada. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Our total focus must be on the Lord and then everything else is in right relationship once we get that down because our life is about union with God through love. And all these little attachments, these little strings that bind themselves to us that we have also willingly put on ourselves are in ways little gods. We all suffer from idolatry at one level or another if we're, if we're really honest with ourselves because you know we all have these little gods, these little things that we worship and we hold so close and we hold so dear. Now that doesn't mean that they're, they're bad. You know, they might be a good thing. It's just how we relate to them is the destructive aspect, is the dangerous part, because true worship of the living God gives life. That's why God imparted the Ten Commandments, the Prophets, the Law, and like all these things to help Israel get in right relationship and right worship so they can open themselves to the life that God provides. And this is why Jesus himself was so angered because the place, the temple, where God's presence resided was supposed to be this place where people can become open to this living presence but at Jesus' time, it became a den of thieves and really a place of idolatry with the money lenders and etc. So in his, his, his anger overturned the temples, cleansing, cleansing the temple. So these little gods, what's going on here? Well, if you don't know what your little god is, just think about those little moments in your life where someone might have said something to you about a thing that you hold close to yourself or something that you hold important and once someone maybe challenges you on it, mess with it, mess with it at some level or another, you respond with either running away from that person or in a very aggressive manner towards that person. That thing that they might have threatened a little bit is probably your little God, you know? And we can look at this in a variety of ways. You know, gluttony and our, our connection with with uh, food, have we made food into our, our sort of God, our appetite, you know, in, in a literal sense in that way? Have we made sort of our bodies, you know, instead of it being a living temple of God is just, you know, a, live, a living temple of desire. You know, have we made our ego and, and what we hold true in our life sort of our little God? And there's so many different things. And there could be, how do I want to put this? You know, maybe mementos and things that we hold in our lives that we sort of put up on pillars that if anyone messes with, you know, we'll freak out upon, you know, these, these little gods. Because, you know, as I said, we all have these little things that have their hooks into us that we worship in our own little ways, our own little habits, our own little uh, practice you know, operandi when we're in his presence and etc. So, you know, idolatry and the spiritual life is all about overcoming by the grace of God these idolatrous practices so we can begin as a foundational vocational call for every Christian to give right worship to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, as you can see, I got some pictures of my family behind me and etc. This is not an easy thing because the things that we worship outside of you know, having right relationship with God, have certain values to them, certain emotional baggage attached to them that provide some sort of nourishment for us, but at the end can't provide eternal life for the things we passed away too. I mean, even the commandment to honor thy father and thy mother helps us to keep one from worshiping their own selves because it reminds us that, hey, we didn't give life to ourselves now, did we? So as we go forward, just as Christ told his disciples... Learn of me, for I am meek and humble of heart. That is a call for all of us, because it is in that message of Jesus that comes from, I believe, Matthew chapter 11. That call to know Jesus 
for he is meek and humble of heart, helps us to reorient ourselves, to become free of these sort of little strands of idolatry that attach themselves to us, that keep us from soaring into the heavens like a beautiful dove, which we're all called to be according to St. John of the Cross. So my brothers and sisters, know that you're not alone in this fight. Know that you are not alone in this struggle. So how do I want to end this? When you go to confession and when you confess, be aware of this sin in your life. Be aware of the little moments of idolatry that might have their tentacles on you and etc. So that way, through the healing grace of the sacrament of reconciliation, you may be freed of these strands. So as you journey through Lent, be aware through your fasting, almsgiving, and prayer, where are these little strands of idolatry that have hooked themselves into you so you can be cleansed of them, just as Jesus wanted to cleanse the temple in a very profound way, he wants to cleanse you and break these strands, these, in a way, chains that weigh you down to earth when we're called to the heights of heaven. So know that I'm with you. Know that I'm praying for you. May God continue to bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hey Carmelos, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. And also I invite you once again, leave a comment down below, maybe letting me know what are those little gods that you're struggling with in your life and maybe what are some ways that you have helped to help yourself by the grace of God to overcome them. Thanks again. I am the Frank Friar, aka Father Nicholas, wishing you a great day.